the first thousand days are very important in the life of anyone. And we have learned this uh, some years ago uh, with um, studies made in adults uh, that showed that uh, the risk at adulthood of having a chronic disease such as a metabolic one or a cardiovascular disease is correlated to the birth weight of the person, let's say to fetal nutrition of these persons. And this has been called first uh, developmental programming because it revealed that a suboptimal development as a fetus in terms of nutrition, for example, when the birth weight is too low, may lead after a long period of silence after birth up to adulthood to an increased risk of suffering cardiovascular diseases, for example, or type 2 diabetes or obesity. And this concept is, uh, has been called developmental programming because we understood that the baby in utero was programming his functions, his cardiovascular physiologic function, his metabolic functions, according to the signals he or she received from the environment, especially nutrition or stress or lifestyle or exposures to toxicants. And so um, this term then has become um, maybe too strong and uh, because it's not uh, a true programming, it's only a statistical risk factor which is set. And not all the babies who had a low birth weight will have, um, as adults, a chronic disease. But um, it's a statistical probability which is increased. And it is uh, uh, certainly um, in some way avoidable if we can optimize the lifestyle and the environment before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and in early infancy. So as we understood that it was this time period that was so important, we started um, uh, uh, naming this concept developmental origins of health and disease, DOHAD, as an acronym. And uh, nowadays, uh, another term is more frequently used because it's more friendly, more simple to understand as well. It's the term of the first thousand days, which is a particularly sensitive window during development during which the baby receives all the signals from the environment, tries to uh, integrate them in its biology, and then um, to, to set the physiologic regulations, biology, the functioning of its body uh, with a, in the best way possible for the future, adapting to the future and environment. And um, this happens during this key period uh, which is which starts around conception already and even before and covers pregnancy and the two first years of the baby. This is more or less 1,000 days and it's easy to remind that's the importance of this period. Nutrition in early life during the first 1,000 days uh, is extremely important because it has not only short-term effects but also long-term consequences up to adulthood. We know today that uh, an excess of nutrients early during a pregnancy or after birth and in infancy, for example, childhood, uh, may favor obesity or overweight later as the baby becomes a, an adolescent 
or even an adult and also uh, during aging later. As nutrition is, is very important, um, it must be balanced during this time between uh, the period around conception, pregnancy and early infancy. And if the baby receives too much nutrients from the mother, this is in case the mother is overweight or eventually obese and possibly even has gestational diabetes, which is a diabetes uh, during pregnancy, then the fetus and the infant later may receive too much energy and nutrients. And this can alter the programming of uh, the functions, metabolic functions, for example, and this alteration may remain for the entire life in some cases. So he will then be uh, prone to develop himself or herself, if he, she is a girl, uh, uh, overweight, obesity, and even possibly diabetes, type 2 diabetes, later in adulthood. has uh, overweight or obesity or even gestational diabetes. There are many things that can be done and with the counseling of her doctor, of course, especially about the diet. So um, having a balanced diet is the best way, kind of a flexitarian diet. And um, it is important that her body weight be monitored so that um, the weight doesn't increase too much. There are some references for this that the, the doctor will uh, use to, to help her and assist her during pregnancy. And uh, also physical activity is extremely important and you are right mentioning uh, the stress the management of stress and, and uh, th this is extremely important and there are methods for this also, also um, the team must be very supportive of the, of the patient and um, there are also methods like uh, mindfulness which can help uh, reduce the level of perceived stress. Also there are there are some interventions which uh, tend to, to limit exposures to toxicants which are very useful uh, as well. And um, for the baby then breastfeeding is the best way to, as a nutrition, especially if um, the pregnancy was suboptimal in terms of fetal nutrition, whether in excess, like in the case of uh, maternal overweight or obesity, or as a relative deficit, in the case there is a disease in the placenta, or a poor maternal nutrition, which leads to a fetal endonutrition. And uh, this must be followed carefully during pregnancy and after birth for the baby himself or herself. There are some possibilities to prevent the long-term consequences of um, maybe an altered early life nutrition. Um, this can be uh, obtained for example, with uh, counseling the, the mother or the future mother and even better, both parents about lifestyle, including nutrition, feeding, having a balanced diet. Uh, with, this means not too much calories, but also not too much proteins, as today uh, we all 
tend to eat too many, too much proteins, uh, enough uh, fat, but preferably vegetal fat, not animal fat, and also uh, not too much uh, carbohydrates. So, um, in addition, uh, having a, a, a good level of physical activity and exercise to spend calories. So this can optimize the metabolic status of the future parents, both the mother and the father. And this will prepare the baby to, with the best regulation, the, uh, the best point set for metabolic regulations, how he will himself or herself behave in terms of metabolic uh, balance. And um, this will help him enjoying a good health during childhood, but also during adulthood, and even at the time when he will be aging. Immediately after birth, breastfeeding is the best possible nutrition for, for the baby. And it is a balanced, dynamic, extremely important um, way of uh, receiving food for the baby. The best food is the milk of his own mother. So um, this can help a lot, uh, including if the mother suffers some overweight or obesity or even gestational diabetes. Um, uh, receiving breast milk will uh, help uh, the infant programming appropriately the metabolic functions and thus uh, the health, the future health, uh, over the life course. In the case a baby cannot be breastfed uh, by his or her mother, um, it is important to to know that some uh, products have been developed, such as uh, probiotics or prebiotics or even synbiotics, and also human milk oligosaccharides, HMOs, who, which are kind of uh, prebiotics uh, as well. And these, um, th th these additions to the baby diet and, um, or in the formula itself uh, can be very helpful. We, we have some, some evidence of the importance of adding uh, probiotics to the milk received, for example, by preterm-born infants. This um, intervention can prevent, indeed, one of the major complications of preterm birth, which is necrotizing enterocolitis. And um, so uh, this is uh, based on randomized control studies and meta-analyses. Uh, research is still ongoing. But it shows that these substances are active and effective. Um, it is possible that we can, we may use these uh, probiotics, prebiotics, HMOs in other circumstances, including in the mother, giving them to the mother, or to babies who have not born preterm. Uh, eventually who have been exposed uh, in utero or after birth to other risks, especially if their, probiome, their microbiome has been altered, for example, after being born by C-section or receiving early antibiotics during the first days or, or weeks of life, and that supplements with probiotics and prebiotics or both of them uh, can help. There are some trials which have demonstrated that, that they can be helpful. Uh, more research is still needed, uh, but it is possible to use these uh, products 
provided uh, a level of scientific evidence. The microbiome has a particular importance in the, this time period of the first thousand days because um, approximately the baby is born sterile with a gut with no uh, microbes inside and then uh, the gut is uh, colonized with uh, microbes uh, which will constitute the microbiome which will be lasting and extremely important for the health of this baby even later. And the colonization um, occurs very little part in utero, it's still discussed, but mostly by uh, at the moment of birth, thanks to vaginal delivery, because then it's the first time the baby can receive all the microbes, which are good ones, in the genital tract of the mother and be colonized with them first. Then the breast milk also brings probiotics and prebiotics as well. And um, so uh, a, a favorable microbiome is thus constituted and the baby will build its later microbiome, which will evolve during life, on the best basis, anyway. So this is extremely important, and um, we, we can just understand easily that if a baby is, knee, is born after C-section, he will not have the benefit of the uh, vaginal um, microbiome um, and will not be able to colonize immediately its uh, gut with these microbes. He will maybe receive the microbes of the environment and possibly from a hospital, which is not the better environment. Then also, if um, some antibiotics are needed in the neonatal period, they may alter the balance of the microbiome and, and allow um, pathogenic species to grow while the, the, the best uh, microbes will be destroyed by the antibiotics. So it is extremely important to, to try to, to limit antibiotic therapies in this period to what is strictly essential and necessary. And also it is possible to, to, to give supplements to the baby uh, uh, with some probiotics. In the case the baby in particular cannot be breastfed because breastfeeding is the best way to obtain the more favorable uh, microbiome in the gut for the short-term health and also for the long-term health later in life. Yes, preterm infants have uh, often a, a microbiome in the gut bi microbiome which is different from that of um, healthy term newborns. And um, they are quite uh, quickly colonized by um, unfavorable uh, microbes uh, from the hospital where they stay. And also because often they are born by C-section or they receive antibiotics. They cannot always receive their mother's breast milk immediately. So they are at risk of developing a, an unfavorable microbiome. It is extremely important to, to work to, to, to manage care in a way that is um, respectful for the natural colonization of the gut by microbes, which is extremely important for the, the health of these babies. As we know that uh, dysbiosis, which is an altered microbiome, um, precedes 
the risk for necrotizing enterocolitis, which is a, a very serious complication of preterm birth. And um, so it, it is important to prevent necrotizing enterocolitis, and it is absolutely possible today to, to give uh, probiotics to preterm born infants during their hospital stay. And, uh, to, to reduce the risk of enterocolitis together with other approaches and of course using their own mother's breast milk for a, as a nutritional, the, the principal nutrition. It is still unknown uh, whether it's prebiotics um, can add a supplement of benefit to the baby or not because uh, most studies have been performed with probiotics in preterm infants. But it, it would make sense to study the effect of prebiotics in the prevention of, uh, for example, necrotizing enterocolitis. This has been done in some places, but needs to be uh, considerably amplified and or combinations of probiotics and uh, prebiotics, certainly. Then, however, um, this needs to be um, studied in comparison with the effect of um, uh, the baby's own mother uh, milk, which is the first step of any prevention and of uh, the, the optimal nutrition of these babies, which are at particular risk.